Hello, Eurovision friends. Thank you so much for coming to my channel, Eurovision Histories. Today, I want to talk about the UK entry for Eurovision 2024. That is Oli Alexander with the song Dizzy. We had heard a small snippet. I reacted to that, but now we have the full song. I was quite excited when he was revealed to be the UK entrant for this year, because obviously he's an established artist with a lot of experience. When I heard the snippet, I wasn't quite as enthusiastic anymore. Let's see what I think after hearing the entire song. Due to popular demand, as you can see, the stars are back. So I will be talking about different aspects of the song and performance, giving points from one to five, and then we'll have an overall rating. And later on, I will also give you my prediction on how this song in the United Kingdom will do at Eurovision in Malmö. And then later on, I also have your votes and comments from the community tab of my channel. If you want to participate in that, you got to subscribe to the channel and then maybe one of your comments will be featured in my videos. So the first aspect I always talk about are the lyrics of the song. And last year, I said a few times with the English speaking countries, I'm a bit more critical when it comes to the lyrics because it's their language and they should be able to, you know, really write something interesting and poetic and different. And if I look at the lyrics here, are they bad? I wouldn't say they are bad. They're not as generic as we are one fire desire higher stuff like that isn't happening. And that is very positive. However, they are very repetitive. It's about getting dizzy with your lover from from the kisses of your lover. And that is just not that interesting. And I'm not um, rating this in a void. We already have so many songs this year. Just yesterday, we had Switzerland and the Netherlands with lyrics that are deep, interesting, that tell a story. And here, I don't really see that. And the repetitiveness is another minus point for me. And so in the end, I decided to give one and a half points for the lyrics. Also because the UK is the home of Shakespeare and you should be able to come up with something better. But anyway, now when we talk about the voice, Obviously, this is just a video clip, so we don't know how the live voice for this will be. However, we do know his singing abilities. We've seen him perform a few times, and I am quite sure that he will be able to sing this song because it's also not that difficult when it comes to the vocal performance. There's a bit of head voice, a bit of register changes, but overall, it's quite monotonous when it comes to the vocal performance. and. There is also a lot of production on his voice, like a lot of tuning, which I usually don't like. But for this kind of song, it's kind of the norm nowadays, and it will be hard to replicate that on stage. And I also have to say that I do like him as an artist, but his vocal tone is not kind of my favorite in the world. Let's put it like that. But in the end, I gave four out of five points because I do think that he will be able to sing this rather well. Now, when we talk about the artist, usually I talk about performance, but here we only have the video clip. He obviously is a very experienced artist. He has great stage presence. I always talk about this performance with Elton John at the Brit Awards, where he really shines and really elevates the song that he sings. And I do think that he will be able to do that as well. He is also an actor. It's a Sin is a show that he has really been acclaimed as an actor for. And I do think that that helps also to interact with the camera, to emote with the song, if you have a song that you can actually emote with. And so I'm quite, you know, positive about that. The fact that he, as a performer and as an artist, will be able to elevate this song. And if you see the dance in the video, you also see that he's very good at that as well. And so in the end, I decided to give four and a half points for the artist. And the name recognition might not be a bad thing either, especially with the juries, but we'll talk about that in a second. Now let's talk about the video and also the potential staging for this. The video to me was a little underwhelming, even though it has a very high production value. You can really see that they spend a lot of money on this that the cameraman knows what he's doing, that there's a different scene changes, and these revolving platforms really make sense with the story of the song, or at least the topic of the song, dizziness. And so I kind of feel like we might have seen a part of the staging for Eurovision already. I think we might have a revolving uh, platform or something like that. 
I do think that the color scheme in the video is a bit, you know, brown <laughs> and doesn't really help the song get elevated either. And it's a very dark video for this kind of song. And I'm not sure whether that's the right direction to go. But um, yeah, I think a bit more color would have been nice. And then I also think that the choreo, which he does really well, I'm not saying anything about that. But when you mute the song and you see him do the dance, you kind of expect something way more dramatic, way more oomph and dark. And then you have the song playing and it's kind of, you know, it doesn't really fit together. So I hope for the stage performance, they will have a bit of a different choreo, maybe some backing dancers as well. And so for video and potential staging, I'm giving three and a half points because it does have a high production value. Now for the song, which obviously is the most important part for the Eurovision Song Contest. I mean, it's a modern chart song. When I hear it, I think this could be on the radio. This could be on the charts. There is a bit of a Dua Lipa thing going on as well, which makes sense because the songwriter also wrote songs for Dua Lipa. But the fact that it is a chart song is also indicative of its genericness. It's very radio friendly and it's very monotonous as well, which makes it very catchy. But to me personally, the originality is just not there. It's a song that we've heard a hundred times before that we can hear every time we turn on the radio. And I'm just not sure that for Eurovision, that is the right thing. Even though I have to say we have a lot of crazy songs already this year, so having something a bit more normal might be helpful in the final, to be honest, between the Croatia's, Estonia's, Finland's and Netherlands. But yeah, it's just not interesting to me. It doesn't make me want to listen to it again. The spoken word part is the only thing in the structure of the song that makes it stand out a little bit. And I don't really like that part either. And so overall, it's just quite eh, to me and quite underwhelming. Also, the chorus, there's not enough oomph in the chorus, I think. And it just goes through the motions over and over again. Having said a lot, um, I'm giving one and a half points to the song. Also from the UK, you kind of expect something even better than this. Now, overall, the th song counts three times, the rest counts once, and that gives us an overall rating of two and a half points for Ole Alexander and Dizzy. Now, before giving you my prediction on how the UK will do at Eurovision, do subscribe to this channel, and then I don't have to remind you to subscribe to the channel anymore. Lots of videos, lots of stuff to discover. Of course, you know the deal. Now, for the prediction, usually I predict whether the country will be able to qualify or not, which in this case is uh, not necessary because, of course, the UK is part of the big five. And so they will be directly in the final, which also means most people will hear this song once unless it becomes a hit before the contest. But I'm not seeing that yet because the song is just not interesting enough to me. I divided the prediction for the final into jury and televote because I do think that there will be a bit of a split here. I think that the juries will be able to recognize his artistry, his professionalism, his stage presence, and also the fact that this is a radio-friendly mainstream English pop song, which the juries usually love, will help him with the juries. However, for the televote, with everything else they will have on offer in that final, if you like a good ballad, you have France. If you like something crazy, you have Finland and the Netherlands. If you like something uh, kind of out there, but still very good, you have Croatia and we'll have more songs coming out. I just think it will be lost in the masses a little bit. And also the UK usually struggles with the televote anyway. And so I am predicting fifth to 10th place for the jury. Maybe that's a bit overrated. And then for the televote 15 to 20th, I do think that it might actually end up in the bottom five, but with my expectation that the staging will be very good, I think it might do a bit better. And so overall I'm predicting 12th to 17th place for this song. I do think that there is a bit of a possibility that this might even end up lower. And I'm not sure what this means for the momentum the UK has had in Eurovision since Sam Ryder's second place because of a big name like Ole Alexander does very badly. I think we might be returning to the days where 
established artists weren't going to Eurovision. But we'll see what happens. This is just my prediction for now. Let me know in the comments what you think. And before letting you go, let's also look at your votes and comments from the community tab of my channel. And yes, you can already see for a very established artist like this to get 7% who give this song five stars is quite low and it is also very much below expectations that people had and then 21 percent gave it four stars 52 percent three stars 15 percent two stars so you kind of like it a little bit more than me but the majority gives this three stars which is not the greatest rating in the world and then six percent even gave it one star which is a bit Harsh. Now let's look at some of your comments. Dr. Doodle 3 says, Super big Oli fan. This and Grease were the songs I was looking forward to the most. Didn't think I could not like an Oli song and then Dizzy came along. Oops. Disappointed is an understatement. So if a fan of his says that the song is not that good, that might be a warning sign. Then Monk along says it's a high quality song and he's probably going to elevate it on stage. For now, I don't really know if I'm satisfied or underwhelmed. I think I'm going to have to listen to it a few more times. Then Frog Enjoyer okay, says evidently I'm in the minority here, but I think this song is brilliant. Okay, not the best, but a comfortable four star for me. One of the best entries we've had in years. Brilliant voice. I guess we is the UK. Brilliant voice, great beats, really chill vibes. And actually, I did quite like the music video, though I still hope the actual staging is different. I think it would be fitting to have quite a few backing. And I think it said backing dancers. And I said that as well. I think you need more color and you need something happening behind him as well. Maybe telling the story of the dizziness a bit more as well. Not just a re revolving platform. Yeah. We'll see. I have no idea how to rank this song in comparison to some of the other entries this year. I really like the song, but it's so Ollie that I am used to from the radio or my playlist that I struggle to see this as an ESC entry. Okay. Hopefully the performance and staging will give it that Eurovision feel. Maybe you can let us know in the comments what you mean by Eurovision feel, because I am always for something not being made for Eurovision, because that will mean that it stands out. And the idea people have, especially in the UK, I think, of what Eurovision is might actually hurt the staging in the end. So I hope he does his own thing and what he wants to do. Then Ariane. Adia Anderson, sorry, it's frustrating that the UK is finally sending an established artist, but it is still an underwhelming and a mediocre song. It's not a bad song, but there are too many strong contenders this year for this to stand out. Yeah, I agree. Getting lost in a sea of better songs and more interesting songs as well. Amber Isabel says it's solid, but I do feel like we were overpromised for something great when it just didn't deliver. The chorus is an anticlimax for me. And the song is so monotone. Yeah, monotone is also a good word to describe it. I don't dislike it, but I don't like it either. It's fine. And the problem is, and if a country knows that it's Germany, sending a fine song that everyone thinks is kind of okay, but isn't really exciting, is kind of a recipe for not doing that well at Eurovision. Because for someone to pick up the phone, you have to have something that makes them pick up the phone. Yeah. Then we have AR50,000. Not happy about the boring colors in the video. The set looks drab, not fab. He has a bubbly personality, so why give him this? Kind of agree, but they also kind of shouldn't make this a stereotypical performance in a way. Ronald18 says, unfortunately, I see UK reaching the bottom five again. Reaching is the wrong word then. It's an okay song. Jury won't like it and the audience will prefer other songs. I do agree with that. And Abdostra Rak says, best song in competition so far. Oli is definitely the winner of Eurovision 2024. Cyprus also catchy song, but Dizzy is just meant to be a winner. So you see very varying opinions about this. I don't think that this will win Eurovision, I'm sorry, but great that you like this song. And then the Mr. Pushy says, I'm underwhelmed. The chorus just really lacks some power. Yeah, it's a little boring. There's no real climax. Still not bad, three out of five stars, but this shouldn't have any chance of winning Eurovision. I had quite high hopes because I loved some of his old songs when he was part of years 
and years. So yeah, I kind of agree that I don't think that this is a Eurovision winning song, but we'll see. Let me know in the comments what you think of the song, what you think of its chances. And also thank you, of course, for voting and for commenting so that I could use this for my video. Please subscribe to this channel and then come back for my next one. See you then and bye bye.